right, so the goal is to take you all the way through a scan with the EinScan SE. And I've got a pretty interesting little cast part that I'm going to scan. So the first thing we're going to do is go Auto Scan, click Next. The scanner will fire up. And in real life, we don't see this rainbow pulsing effect. That's aliasing between the Pico projector and the camera that's in the phone. So new project. Let's call it Test 2. And I can choose between capturing a scan with texture and a scan without texture, and I'm going to skip texture for now. In this region over here, I can make this a little bigger. Um, this is actually the image coming from the cameras on the scanner. And you want to make sure that the object of interest never gets overexposed. So you see this red highlighting that's happening. It means that it's being overexposed. So we want to be somewhere down where it's not being overexposed, but we don't want to be so dark that it's going to take a long time. So a trick that I've found to maximize this, if you think there's any part of it that's going to have a specular reflection, swing that around and make sure that you're not overexposing all over the surface. If the specular travels between rotations, you will probably be able to capture good geometry even though there is a specular. So consider that as well. A brighter exposure is generally a better exposure. I've got an exposure level, I'm going to say apply. And the minimum number of steps you can have when you use the turntable is eight steps. It means that this will rotate one eighth of a circle every time. So let's hit start. So you can see the scan data that comes out of this thing is already pretty nice, pretty clean, pretty good, very detailed. It's capturing the threads, it's capturing the, I guess you could call it pseudo knurling on the locking part of the connector. And it's also capturing that fine text on the side. Now one of the challenges that this scanner has is as it rotates, the object may not be in the dead center. So the different sections as it's scanning around may not line up perfectly. When it's done capturing all the sections, it'll make an attempt at aligning them. All right, so let's look this over. This is actually phenomenal. When I zoom way in, you can see that we're looking at point cloud data. It's not actually a mesh, even though it appears like a mesh at some zoom level. So it's got the little hole here. It captured this text, which says Glen Eyre, Inc., Glendale, California. And uh, we're missing a few spots, like under the chin here, and of course inside the tube where it can't see. So the way that you handle that is you accept this first scan data, and then you can continue the scan. Okay, so I've placed the object in a new position. Now, I know from experience that circularly symmetric objects like this one that have lots of repeating features like threads or knurls present a challenge to the scanning engine. When it does these rotations, it has some difficulty aligning these parts. And one of the tricks that I've learned along the way is to put a small reference object nearby that will help disambiguate the different sections of the scan. So let's give that a shot. Okay, let's take a look at that data. Yeah, there's some filling in or something going on here, but let's merge this back with the rest of the data and see how it looks. Okay, so we filled in substantially some of the other parts that I was interested in. I'm a little worried about the thread quality there, but that could be just a glitch. And what I'm going to do now is actually select and delete this object so it doesn't have any influence on anything going forward. And I'm also going to remove it from the turntable. And now I'm going to think about how can I capture even more about this object. And one way would be to position it something like this. Or even this. Okay, so let's take a look. This is the scan with the object laying on its side. I'm not sure that this is going to contribute a lot to the final scan. And something good to keep in mind is that just because you scanned it doesn't mean you need to use it. But I think I am going to include this. So let's uh, give it a shot and see how it does with alignment. Okay, so alignment failed. 
So let's see if we can do a a point to point alignment. Let's say here and here and here and here and it's going to be tough but let's say here and here okay great now it's done a great job of aligning these two meshes and I want to delete this reference object again okay now at this point I could go on scanning for a long time but I want this uh, I want this video to be digestible so you can see the quality of scan that you get out of this thing and what I'd like to do now is make this a non watertight mesh now I could make this a watertight mesh the issue being that all of these areas that are not yet scanned will fill in with junk geometry that's generated by this algorithm so instead I don't want to print this right away I want to use this for reference so let's make it a mesh and we'll choose unwatertight model this is 442,000 polygons we could certainly fill holes of you know two millimeters or or less or one millimeter or less even then let's simplify 80 percent so here's the smoothed mesh and there's the Glenair ink that's on the side of the original model there are the neurals, there are the threads my guess is that there's even more performance to be had out of this thing but this is pretty darn good this would be plenty to reverse engineer this thing 